I'm actually down for you guys to choose another song and perform it right now as the cold open. If you would like to do that. Uh, we can't. We can't. Okay, uh, look, I, I won't, can't, I'm not, can't force ours. We don't do requests, I think. Okay, fine. It, it, just has, to be, it has to be organic. You know? mm. Yeah. Mm. Like. Mm. Oh, from New York, New York, you are listening to Extra Time, driven by Continental from the AT&T MLS Studios in Midtown Manhattan. I'm Andrew Wiebe with my partners in soccer, Matt Doyle, Susanna Collins. He's back. I feel much more comfortable at ease. David Goss, my, you <laughs> Your know. Your safety net's I was, here. Yeah, for sure. I was a little bit kind of on edge. Yeah. With other people occupying I've returned, that and I've returned probably double the size because I ate my way through nice. Southeast Asia. Good for you. 20 you look, meals a day for eight, nine days. You look felt. Yeah. Enough. You have a glow. Yeah. Ish. Thank you. It's, yeah. it's the glow of not being on extra time. <laughs> so, you, you said you ate your way through Southeast Asia. You went to Singapore, Vietnam. That's it. That's it? Yeah. Um, was it like a lot of pho and, and, and banh mi? Or, or? Well, so Singapore is fantastic mm -hmm. because there's a lot of cultures that I've met there. It's pretty new. Mm -hmm. Best Indian food I've ever had. In, in Singapore. Singapore. Really? Yeah. Interesting. It's a massive part of their population. That makes sense, actually. Some of the best Chinese food I've ever had in Singapore. Yeah. And then I went to Vietnam and just ate Vietnamese food. Yeah. But it, I... The pho was amazing, mm -hmm. banh mi, and then I learned there are 500 separate dishes in Vietnamese cuisine. Whoa. 500. You know how, how many, many of those I could eat? 500. <laughs> how many did he eat? Probably 500. At uh, some point, I was like, how can you take noodles and rice vinegar and put them together in a different combination? They're like, well, we could do this. I was like, I'll have one of those. Yeah. yeah. So I, I had a soccer topic here, but I should have known. Like, Dave goes to Orlando goes right to, food. to yeah. call USL and, and like Nations League, and he comes back and tells us for <laughs> a lot five of good minutes Colombian about food in Orlando. It's yeah. good okay. content. Let's get some, you know, we're going to get to some other. We have Oscar Pereja, by the way, coming up. The new head coach of Orlando City. It is Welcome finally happening. He's going to join us here in a little bit. Profe, as I always call him in my head and wonder if I'm like weirding him out when I call him that. No, he uh, just ignores you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we'll run through all of the news from MLS. There's a lot of news to go over, whether it's Luis Robles finally ending up with Miami, a number of different rumors, everything you need to know. 22 under 22, top 10. We got that. We have a mailbag with a very good email about a uh, maybe future alignment of MLS with two conferences and a balanced schedule. But first... This is the actual Vietnam soccer question. What jerseys did you see? Who Lots did you talk to about soccer? Because anywhere you go, yeah. that's what immediately happens. Yeah, Cab so, drivers, waiters, yeah. random person on the street, <laughs> right. somehow soccer comes Once up. again, I went on this trip and was like, well, it's not a soccer trip because it's not really a soccer place. Didn't work that way. I saw. Uh, I just want to out you. I saw you wearing the LAFC black oh, kit. Yeah. Someone asked me, uh, uh, someone there was like, why are you from LA? I was like, no, they're like, why are you wearing that? I was like... Because it is 99 degrees, cool. <laughs> and then when I sweat in this thing, no one knows. Climb a cool. So I wore that thing like three straight days because I had to. And to, to be clear, and to be clear, clear, not clear like, yeah. Yeah, to be clear you, you sweat <laughs> when it's 39 degrees. Right. Oh, yeah. so I was sweating on the subway geez. today. God, can you turn the heat down? Lay off gas. <laughs> oh. uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm uh, a sweater, too. I get it. <laughs> but I was clearly at Rivals with everyone because so much LA Galaxy gear. Really? Like consistently, Singapore and Vietnam. Like any jersey specifically or just like no, so no name. No name. Like warm warm up tops. I will not lie. I do not think they were purchased at the MLS store <laughs> on MLSsoccer.com. Yeah. My yeah. assumption is they oh. were made separately <laughs> and sold separately. Yeah, but know, like different birthplace. Fine. I'm jerseys. sitting there sitting on on Beer Street in Hanoi on a little stool, plastic stool in the middle of a road, drinking a beer, and this dude who's cooking food is wearing an LA Galaxy warm up right across me. And I was like, and he had no idea what I was pointing <laughs> out. Or what my involvement was. Zlatan. Yeah. He's like, what? Yeah. What? More rice vinegar and noodles? So, so a ton of LA Galaxy gear. My one soccer story is we went on a tour, and then we got dropped off in the middle of the city at the Opera House in Hanoi. And we get off. And obviously, as you all know, it's the middle of the SEA Games 2019 in the Philippines and Vietnam. is dominating both on the men's and women's side. Men's of at course. the U22 level. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's been a great tournament. Uh -huh. Watched a lot of these games. Really disappointing <laughs> performance by Malaysia, by the way. Really disappointing. And uh, we Chew get on off. That, Malaysia. Chew on that. Yeah. And Vietnam is playing against Thailand for first in the group. And uh, they're having a watch party right in front of our hotel. Like the big screens in the street. Everyone's there. And so I stood there and watched it. 
unreal winner from like 20 yards out to end the game, like the 93rd so, minute. So I just it's wanna, raining, I, and yeah. I was like, can I, I just couldn't get away here? from this. Are these moments, you, you're there with your girlfriend, yeah. when you walk out the front of the hotel, and the game's on, and you start to just naturally, like a magnet, drift that direction? Is she on the other side pulling you, or does she indulge those moments? <laughs> no, so she was pretty excited about it, except that she was extremely sick. <laughs> And it was cold and raining, and we stood out there for 45 minutes and watched <laughs> yeah. the second half. And say, she has it's not a, a five cold minute stop with Dave. It is the no. rest of the game. Listen, it was for first place in the group. Oh, yeah. Like, this is group B at the SEA game. The world's eyes were on that <laughs> game. Oh, my God. And Fu <laughs> Dong Wok hit an insane strike, right. and that's where we're did at Did you drop the Lee Win reference at any time? I did you did. try to connect with people via your Lee Win connection? I did one time, and they were extremely excited about it. Oh, yeah. And I don't think he played in Hanoi, but he did play in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and he had just, well, I guess the expansion draft was like a week before I left. Uh, uh, they knew he w had moved from LAFC to Inter Miami, the guy that I was talking to. Right. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is next level stuff. They're like, no, no, he's a great player, one of the greatest players in our country's history. I was like, whoa. It's probably pretty cool to be Lee Wynn. Go to yeah, Vietnam. No kidding. Because it was cool pretending that I knew Lee yeah, Wynn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me and Lee? Yo, yo, yeah, me and me. You, got, you got like the red carpet service yeah. at that uh, point. Lee, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Uh, hey, this is Lee Wynn's friend. Bring him through. Yeah. Bring him through. You're like, how uh, do you know him? I was like, well, I've been in the same room as him. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, friendship. We've spoken. I don't know if he follows each that other on him. Twitter. It's right. thing. I don't think he follows me. Yeah, I, yeah. I follow him on Twitter. Okay. So that sounds fun. Yeah, it was a great time. I advise anyone to go to any of those places, plus more. Okay. Let's talk about Major League Soccer in a more targeted way, maybe. And we'll start with the home openers. They dropped on this uh, Thursday. It's Thursday? Yeah, on this Thursday. What stands out to you guys? What are the games you're like, ooh, that's the one I'm I'm all about. We can start okay. with what? I'm going to start with Nashville's first yes. game? Yes. Yeah. I was like, Sears wants that. Yes. Atlanta if United? I don't get, if I don't get sent to that match, I'm going to be real Stop. Heads gonna roll. Heads are gonna roll. It's gonna be amazing. Nissan Stadium. I mean, we've seen what they've done at Nissan Stadium. Soccer in Nashville is legit. The fans there are so ready. And the fact that it's against Atlanta United, because like already, I mean, they haven't played one game. Nashville has already established the fact that Atlanta is their number one rival. Also, yeah. how many Atlanta fans do you think go? Because oh, it's like a two-hour drive. Yeah, it's a, it's a super... I think it's more than two-hour, but like it's, do that it's totally drivable. I drove, so we kind of went like a, a weird roundabout way. It was definitely... You could do it in a, It was like a five-hour... Oh, I thought it was close. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you're thinking, of you're thinking of Chattanooga. For, for most of the country, five hours, it's really. It's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> Come on. It's for a, me, also, that's also yeah, we yeah, were stopping think. along the way because I was with Abner, yeah. who, like, we had to eat, like, every, like, 45 every minutes. Every biscuit. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> it probably took a little longer than it should. If you're Nashville, are you happy about having Atlanta? The one matchup you get with Atlanta, unless it happens in the Open Cup or wherever else, right off the bat? Yeah, because Atlanta usually stinks at the start of the season. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If you True. think about it, they were actually really good in their opener against the Red Bulls three years ago. Houston. And they got killed by Houston yes. two years and ago. And they have CCL to uh, think about, too. Yeah. yeah, and then last year, I think th they struggled out of the gate. So this might be your best chance. And if you get that win against the team that at home is probably going to be your geographic Nissan, rival, yeah. not necessarily your conference rival, like it's, yeah. That's, it's good. That's I'm, look, I'm pumped for that Nissan one. Nissan Stadium is going to be jacked. It's going to be fun. I'll be on your side on this one, Susanna. As someone who's been to a lot of uh, first ever games for expansion wow. teams, mm -hmm. do it, do you it. know, let's just say mm -hmm. I've been do in a it. march or two. Come on! I've been in a march or two. <laughs> all right. Wow. I'm here for Montreal Impact. Revs, 3 p.m. So this means, wait, so this game's on the 29th, which I'm means trying we'll, to figure out if so it's we'll have our show the... on March 2nd, which Suze will come back from that game and be like, right. I think Nashville might be MLS. So I just want to put that down. I just want to say, if Nashville don't win that match, then maybe they should have sent me because we all know how wow. Cincinnati did. Here we go. We all know oh. how Cincinnati did against the Portland Timbers with uh, we be in the building. It is a little bit of a bummer <laughs> that Montreal New England is not the first game of the season. That is uh, DC Rapids, if I'm reading this right. But Henri getting mm -hmm. it started. Yeah. Talk to you that. Different. Yeah. yeah. Against Bruce. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be uh, awesome. Also, uh, it's it's Stad Olympique, so you can get the crowd. Like, you can get 45,000 in there to be like, bonjour, Henri. Bonjour. That's what I'm looking oh, okay. for. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> we knew about, uh, we knew about uh, what, Inter-Miami, LA Galaxy. We did not know about LAFC Inter-Miami yeah. Sunday, March 1st at Bank of California. I mean, you know I'm watching all of these <laughs> games, but that one, I'm going to be super, super interested because I, I think... The Inter Miami is going to try to build 
the East Coast version of what LAFC were. You know they're going to come out and try, whoever their coach ends up being, you know they're going to come out <laughs> and try to be a ball-dominant team that ends up playing. It's Marcel Gallardo, trust me. I, I still think it's going to be Gallardo. We had this discussion last yeah, week. I didn't really have a ton of service. Every once in a while, I get a little clip. <laughs> and one was, Gallardo not coming to Inter Miami. Doyle says it's still happening. <laughs> I don't think I put. I, I just think logistically the the Vieira thing makes no sense, and I know that like uh, Sam's reported it, Taylor's reported it, but like they're waiting for the guy to get fired. That's how they're going to pick. Like it doesn't make sense to me. Um, but j- like I, I think these two teams are going to be a lot of fun to watch all next season, um, and I can't wait. Can't wait to see them go head to head. Uh, David Moyes, does he have a job right now? Oh boy, maybe now's the time. <laughs> Rumor is he will David be the interim Moyes manager connection. at Everton. Really? Yeah, that Silva will get fired. Do you remember when we? Uh, what, what was the game? We went out to New Jersey and David Moyes was on the train. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. U.S. Uh, versus was it U.S. Costa Rica? Uh, I don't remember. This was two summers ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, ago. it was Mexico. Uh, it was it Mexico? No, it was Mexico, Ireland. Mexico, Ireland. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yep. that's a random aside. I forgot about that. And David Moyes uh-huh. was stuck on the New Jersey transit with no him. No way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By himself. That's really random. He went by himself, too. And we were trying to sneak pictures Respect. of him and trying Respect. to like put him out on the internet yeah. to be like, whoa, David Moyes from yeah. who? I love that he was brave in the. And I know the transit system. He Did, probably thought it, remarkable. he probably thought it was going to work. Yeah. <laughs> like, he this regretted will be that decision yeah. immediately. You think you're going to be a black car guy, but <laughs> hey, David Moyes, a man of the people. Uh, and then also the fire, their first game at, at uh, Soldier Field, March 21st against Atlanta United. Mm. So that's an interesting one as well. Let's talk. Wow, so it's Joseph versus Chicharito just to start. Woo. The- oh, Woo. Oh. <laughs> don't you mean Lewandowski? Oh, that would be I awesome. Mean, again, Come on, please, just- please. <laughs> no. <laughs> let's just go back to the inner Miami head coaching thing on that one. Like, let's get a GM or a technical director and a head coach. And you <laughs> yeah, know, the fireman. A couple designated players. Firewatch continues. Yep. So, mm. Orlando City, though, they have hired a head coach. Oscar Pereja is the head coach. You knew this was coming. We knew this was coming. Taylor Twelman knew this was coming. Oscar Pereja knew this was coming. Club Tijuana probably knew this was coming. Everybody knew it was coming. Oscar, of course, has a long storied history in Major League Soccer, both as a player as well as an academy director and then as a head coach with FC Dallas. His roots there run extremely deep, but it kind of had run its course, and so he went to Tijuana for a year. They didn't make the playoffs because it's Tijuana. They let him go, and now he's back in Major League Soccer with Luis Muzi, who he knew very well from Dallas as well. Oscar's going to join us in just a second. We'll get his answers on the roster, on the why Orlando, on his life in Tijuana, and maybe a little more on CCL if we can find the time. Basically, every reaction I have seen, Doyle, Mm -hmm. is that people like this move, that this is a good move, that this is the right move. Why is that the reaction, and does the reaction match up with the reality in your mind? Uh the reaction does match up with the reality and you know, Bobby, Bobby Warshaw wrote about it for us. And he, you know, he knows Oscar Pereja because he was in Dallas a little bit with Oscar. He played against Oscar Pereja teams. Uh, He, he understands. He was a reserve player on yeah. Oscar Pereira's yeah. reserve team. Yeah, so he's like when he's, he wasn't training with the U12. Right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we don't even know where Bobby is. I haven't seen Bobby in a long time. Yeah, uh, missing man. Um, so I, I thought Bobby's the, the way he broke it down was very good in terms of like what happens on the field. Is Pereira's teams compete? They're pragmatic. They're fast. They they have these principles of how they build the team and how they go out and play. And I thought that all made a lot of sense. I would say just like bigger picture, globally and, and culturally, um, like Bray has a culture builder. If you if you talk about what happened to Dallas over these past ten years. Everybody says it started with the academy. It started with when Pereja was there and just put it all together. And that's grown into this team that makes the playoffs just about every year, competes for trophies just about every year. When Pereja was there, they made the playoffs four out of five times. Um, They won two trophies. When Pereja was at Colorado for two years, he made Colorado good. (laughs) <laughs> which was not easy to do in the first half of this decade. And I know he just got dis- – Wasn't like, that easy in the second half. <laughs> no, it wasn't easy. <laughs> uh, uh, like, he just got dismissed by, by Cholos, but, like, he made the playoffs last year, and they played well – or the first half of the year in the, in the Klaus era. They played well. The second half, they played well again until – Midway through the the Apertura, the rumor started, and suddenly the team fell apart. Uh, I think in large part because of that. So he like 
he knows how to put something together that sort of knits itself together. And Orlando City have never had that. Five years, constant change, whether it's the front office, on the field, on the sideline. Um, and, and, like, this is a team that has lacked vision. And I think with Luis Muzi and now Oscar, Oscar Pereja, if ownership's willing to, to give them some resources, and they don't need to spend like Atlanta or LAFC or the Galaxy, but just give them, you know, middle-of-the-pack resources and invest in Oscar Pereja and get out of his way for three or four years, it's going to be a great hire. Mm-hmm. I agree with everything Doyle said, and I just think there hasn't been either you want to use the term true north or, um, you know, a a leader or like a center for Orlando. There hasn't been any consistency. Right. There's been no middle point where it's like, yeah, we did this, which didn't make sense, and this didn't make sense, but it all kind of comes together because it's all going in this direction. And like Doyle said, Oscar will bring that. And it won't be the most beautiful soccer in Major League Soccer. And one of the things that happened with Dallas was there might be a ceiling to it because he only really changes things so much and he kind of sticks with guys. But that ceiling is so far past what what Orlando City has been capable of. The floor is probably past what Orlando City has accomplished in their entire MLS career because guys will play hard. They will believe in what they do. They will be passionate about playing for that club. I think the fans will come back because you enjoy being around the games because he creates an atmosphere where it's a battle and you're a part of it. And, uh, you know, in the press conference, he talked immediately about the fans. Like, he's someone that when he talks and when he's in the room, you feel his presence. You're engaged with him. You want to be a part of what he's doing and you believe in what he's doing. It may not always be the genius level soccer, but... He will win games in Major League Soccer, and he will make this club better than it's ever been. I think that's the most important thing, what you just said about, like, getting building the culture and, and getting the fans back. This is, I mean, when you look at Orlando City Stadium and the wall and when it fir- they first came into Exploria. the league. Exploria. Oh, God. Oh, Exploria, yeah, yes. yes. You guys, there have been so many stadium <laughs> name changes, and I, I literally— It's hard to keep up with not keep up. <laughs> yep. But it's such a, it's a beautiful place to play soccer. When they first started, you know, seeing that place filled up with the fans was so, it was so exciting, and and they've you know it's been a not hasn't, a good product, hasn't been not that a good product the on the field. Yeah, and speak that truth. That is the truth. And they are they are you know disenchanted as as they should be. You can't blame them. In and, the most enchanted city, no less. In the most <laughs> in the most magical place on earth, <laughs> guys, the home of Disney World. But I I do think that Oscar Perea is the guy that can build a cu- culture not only within the team but get that fan base back and and help them help them kind of cultivate what they had already started to build and that's what I'm excited to see. And one of the things everyone wants to know is what's going to happen with the academy because he was so successful in Dallas and cuz it feels like Florida has talent that yeah. he can tap into. So much. He connects with families on a different level than any MLS associate, you know, whether it's head coach, front office, assistant coach that I've ever seen. Like he genuinely gets families to believe he's going to be what's best for their kid. And that's why Dallas was so successful from a base level. He also, you walk in his office in Dallas, and he had depth charts from U12 through the first team. He knows exactly what's going on. He's invested in it. He believes that young players in this country can succeed at the highest level and compete at the highest level. So for the academy structure – I don't know how he can rebuild everything. I don't know where they're going to play. Are they going to have a two team? Where is the reserve team going to be? What the academy style will be. But he will get talent to come in because people want to play for him and families want to send their kids to be a part of it. Inter Miami is only scouting Miami. They're not going outside of Miami. Right now, Atlanta United is the local academy team for Florida. So there's a ton of opportunity for Oscar Preyau to build that part of the club. Stability. Yeah. Stability, stability, stability. Give Oscar Preya some time to work, and Oscar's on the phone with us right now. It's an AT and T call to the field. Oscar, how's it going? Andrew, how are you? Happy to hear you again, and uh, happy to be here. I am great. I'm happy to have you back. We're happy to have you in Orlando. It seems like a great fit. Tell us why it was the right destination for you. What can you build in Central Florida? Well, I, I think after uh, we analyze our possibilities, uh, Andrew, we see in Orlando big potential here to develop a lot of stuff. You know, and, and I've been in Major League Soccer for many years and recognizing and the talent that America has on the young players and and in the academies, I, I saw Orlando as a perfect fit on trying to keep building on that part because that's, that's 
has been a, a group who in five years had done a lot of good things. Even people just recognize the frustrations, but uh, in, in, in short time, I think Orlando has created a good franchise with a group, uh, a group of, of, of fans and, and, and now the academy, the, the second team and, and, and the first team. I think we can unify all those things and make it better. Before we get locked into Orlando City and your future there, we want to talk for a second about Tijuana because what you did is unique to leave Major League Soccer to coach at the highest level in Mexico, one of the biggest leagues in the world. What was your life like there in Tijuana? What was the job like? What was the experience like? Well, it was great. It was great. Uh, first, it was a tough decision. As you all know, just leave uh, a place uh, like Dallas. He uh, home me for many years as a player and, and also create a big history in my life, uh, creating what we did there. Uh, but just being a way of that uh, conversion, not because it was easy, but because uh, the, the many years that, that we had there, just trying to grow as a coach, that's probably the best that I can do for me and also for, for Dallas and, and, and allow that refreshing there. And when I went to Tijuana, I found uh, what I expected, you know, a very dynamic league, uh, a, a league who is very competitive in the day by day, uh, the quality of the players, the quality of the coaches, and and, and the pressure of, of the fans for, for the immediate success. And, and all those things create in, 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 your, in your area a, a lot of stress that, that help you to make decisions, to see how can you find ways to win games. And, uh, and with, with all that diversity and variety of, 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 of coaches and, and tactics and all those things, uh, I think we have a, 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 a very good year in, in terms to the com- competition. So I hope that I can make me a better coach at the end. You haven't been gone for long, Profe? How are you different? Are you different? Are you the same guy we knew at Dallas, or has Tijuana and Liga MX and your life there changed you a little bit? It's the same person, for sure. Uh, nothing changed. It's just the experiences as a, as, as a coach, you know, in terms to to our job. Uh Sometimes we see things uh, different, or, or, or we see other process that, uh, and some some way show you different ways to analyze, to play against, and uh, and, we, and we try to collect all those experiences and try to apply it into our next journey. So I, I was listening to the press conference, Oscar, and I heard you say, quote unquote, positive mentality. You wanted everybody in the club to have that. And you talk about the work that's been done at Orlando, but the elephant in the room here, and everybody knows what it is, is that they've never made the playoffs. There's a weight in that. And we see that weight show up in games, in big moments, in the media, and the way coaches have cycled through. How do you, when you come into a club like this, reverse the weight of recent history, of the losing? How do you create a blank slate for your players, for the staff, for the fans, for everybody? Can you do that? Does it just take time? It, it surely takes time. Uh, we would like to um, shorten those, uh, those uh, process and, and make it the results come soon. And obviously you will get that uh, through the work and and to the philosophy of being compromised and, and, and responsible for, for doing the job well from players, coaches, staff, and, and everybody. Uh, yeah, I keep repeating from, from the confidence that we all have done a, a good job, that people here have done a lot of job here in five years. Uh, and it's not a rebuilding, it's, it's a keep building. Uh, at the process, so uh, try to put good memories on 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 the five years. Uh, just try to avoid the frustration and and try to make the people think positive uh, from every single corner of the club. And and in terms to the team, just put them in the training ground and start believing, and we can change that and and have the dream to put the team into the playoffs. But more than that, it's just become a a, a, a team who is protagonist in the league. Uh, that that will be a priority. You mentioned the good things that have been done at the club. You said 
in the press conference that you believe in this roster, that you liked some of the things you saw in 2019. Who are the guys that are part of this group that you're excited about working with? Who are the guys who are going to be big pieces, key pieces to what you're trying to build? Right. Uh, the first is that, as you know, my, my memories with, uh, with Orlando playing against them and when I came here to compete, uh, those first couple of years when we saw the fans uh, very involved uh, with uh, with the club, uh, and and even now that we all know that has been has been frustrations there for not making the finals. Uh, but I have seen people involved here uh, with with the team, and and, and that excites me. Uh, now with uh, with the roster, as you know, I. I think they had a, 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 and through the season, I think they had a, a very good games and with people that has been adapting to the league, uh, people who has been recognized as the best in Europe, for example, with uh, with Nani and, and and Mauricio who came in August, uh, who is a player that is very talented and recognized in South America and he played in in, in Russia. And, and players that are national team caliber, like uh, Robin, who has been called to the Sweden national team, and and Mendes, uh, and and Ruan, who had a, a very good uh, season, and the, the youngsters uh, uh, that have been part of the process as well, uh, Benji, Patino, uh, and, and 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 Mueller, and Tesho, who had a good season overall. Uh, you know, and many of them, he had he had had a, a, a decent season. We would like to build on that and bring in some help from other players, but can be the correct ones, not not any player. But uh, signing well is is crucial for the clubs. I won't ask you who the correct players are. I'm sure we'll find that out soon enough. But I do want to know where you think the squad needs that reinforcement. I didn't hear you say Dom Dwyer's name. Maybe I just missed it there. But you know, the defense got better. Goal scoring a little bit of an issue. Where does this club need help? Right, I start uh, saying that Dominic, because uh, I faced Dominic for years, uh, and I sue for him. Uh, I think he's a very talented player. I think he's one of the best forwards that the Major League Soccer has had in the last eight years. So D- Dominic uh, has all that potential to keep helping. Uh, we would like to see how 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 can we help him to get that confidence back and 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 see how can we build this team, counting on the people who is here at the moment. That's our first uh, responsibility. Every single player that I have in the roster today, I'm counting with now. If there is any other movement, uh, we'll, we'll do. But at the moment, I, I believe in these guys, and, and I think they have the potential to get this team to the next level. Oscar, one of the things that was such a key part of your success in Dallas was your connection to the club, to the city, your history, your passion for building the sport in that area. How do you take that and now go to Orlando and build something similar when you don't have that history or that connection to the area? Exactly. That's not an easy job because we're, we're new here. We're not uh, uh, as known as, as I, I did in Dallas, as you say, for my history. They're playing nine years. Uh, but that's one of the challenges that make us uh, uh, better in our jobs. And, and I already d- decided uh, two years ago when I left uh, uh, Dallas a year ago that I would like to have that experience and see if I can challenge myself on, on being that person who can do that somewhere else. And I think uh, Orlando has uh, a, a lot of things that I, I see as uh, with that potential and, and Obviously, it's not an easy job, but the risk is uh, has been taken already, and 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 that's that has been so far has been good. Do you think the talent level in Central Florida, knowing what you know just right this second, is is high enough to do something similar to what you did in Dallas? When you look around or talk to youth coaches or talk to Louise, what's your feel for the level of youth talent in that area? Uh, it is quite different. Uh, but the diversity on the market in Major League Soccer is what it makes this country, uh, or what it will make this country even better. And uh, I would like to be part of that exploration to see how the market in, in, in Central Florida can 
can be similar to the teams in Major League Soccer who have been successful on that part. Uh, once again, uh, Andrew, I don't think it's, a, it's an easy job, but uh, but it's nice. It's nice to have that challenge and see how can we uh, recruit good players, how we can scout good players, if we can provide an opportunity for players who have a different structure here in Florida. Just get into the path that we think is the right one to be an MLS player. Really excited to see what you do, especially on the academy level, but of course, starting late next February in the first team. I do wonder, though, in the last year, knowing your relationship with Lucci with FC Dallas, how much you watched FC Dallas. Have you watched these young players, many of whom are now in 22 under 22, as they have been for so long, but making big strides in their careers? Did you watch Paxton this year, Reggie, see how Lucci did? What would you think? I think he's great. You see those youngsters used to take to the take the next step. Uh, and obviously, I follow the league uh, in, 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 in Dallas because these are the people that I I knew, and and the players you see in those those players flourish and, and and get their game to the next stage is fantastic. Uh, and keep recognizing FC Dallas as uh, that franchise who can develop players. I think they have done a great job on give continuity to what is the philosophy of the club when there is when there was nothing. And uh and they, they should be proud. I think uh, the, the seeing the players and, and, and how they're interacting with the national teams and the calls is fantastic. One more before I let you go here, Oscar. We now have a busy day. I've got the CCL fever. I love the CONCACAF Champions League and it occurs to me that you've seen up close and personal, some of the clubs that MLS teams will be going up against next year. Seeing Liga MX, coaching Liga MX, coaching in MLS, how big is the gap to you between the two leagues? What is the gap like? What's the difference? Well, I think some sometimes it's the perception that we all have, and uh, more than the reality. I see the Liga MX as a as a as a, as a great league. And, and I said to you earlier, it has great player. The quality of the player is fantastic, and the quality of the coaches too. The strategy, the strategy, the, the tactics. But Major League Soccer is growing tremendously, and and sometimes the people here in the country don't recognize it because we all hear. But I think the league is is growing, is growing immensely. We we would like to see that gap. Uh, if if now it's now because I I don't think it's a big gap I think all those differences um, are going to be reduced but there is some characteristics of major league soccer in my opinion that are are going probably even better. All right, what, can I just ask you real quick what those are? What you think is better? I think the organization the stadiums. Uh, I think the involvement of uh, of the fans with their clubs. I think the process with the academies are growing as well a lot, and and that's that's a full potential for the league. What's the one thing that you would say we have to improve on? Looking ahead to CCL, looking ahead to Leagues Cup, looking ahead to the next decade and beyond, what should MLS focus on to match up with and maybe get over the hump with League MX? I think you know because uh, uh, Major League Soccer has uh, standards and rules and and a system in place. Just to to to, to grow uh, probably in a constant mode, you know, and uh, in in, uh, in the Liga MX in South America, they're more aggressive on this part, you know, the signing of players and and the dynamics. But for me, it's just uh, a way to do things. Uh, the the pace of growing in Major League Soccer is great. I think they're going in in in, in a good pace. Uh, that probably will be something that well, we can. We can review and, and see. We can expand more that for teams. Just allow more freedom to to the ownerships and 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 just let them put more money into the clubs. It's a big off season for that NMLS. A big off season for Orlando City. They have their head coach, Oscar Pereja. We now know, of course, when they will play their first game as well. A home game against Real Salt Lake on Saturday, February 29th. That is in oh about three months, two months. Yeah, three months. My math. Oscar, good luck. You know, I have a lot of work to do, uh, but thanks for chatting and catching up with us. Okay. All right, guys. Ciao. All right, that's Oscar Preya. He has a big job. The academy side, the youth development. That is long term.
that takes time to build. It takes time to bring players through. He'll get that started. But, look, they got to attack the number one thing, which is make the playoffs. Make the playoffs. Seven teams got in. You didn't get in. You weren't even close. And you moved through another coach. How do they do it? How does their roster look right now to you guys? Is it enough? He says he wants to add more pieces. He didn't go into many specifics on those pieces. Uh, but right now, Nani, Mauricio Pereira, who we really did not see much of last year, Dom Dwyer, Juan, they brought him in full-time. That's good. The back line looks a little short, maybe. Well, I would argue they have three starters along the back line already on the roster. Okay, Jansen. And, and Kamal Miller. Juan. Yeah. You see Kamal Miller as a starter at left center back? I I don't know what Oscar will play. If he plays five in the back, it makes a ton of sense. Also, I think it gets the best out of Juan. I don't know if he will, but yeah. yeah. But I think he can be a starter at left back or... Uh, you know, five in the back, two center backs, left back. He's good enough to compete at any of those spots. Is this roster as it's constructed I like now? No, as well. He he was good until he got. Is hurt. it good enough to make the playoffs? Probably no, not. No, no. Um, but the thing is, they have a little flexibility because I think Perea is going to be a TAM player this year, so they can bring in another DP. They're going to have to figure out. You know, what I, one of the things they have to figure out is what to do with Dom Dwyer. Mm-hmm. Whether they think he has enough gas left in the tank. Um, if his finishing last year was an aberration or um, whether he can go back to the type of guy who was getting 15, 16 goals a season for like four or five straight years. Um, that's the big question. And if if they're stuck with Dom Dwyer and it's the Dom Dwyer of last season, that definitely lowers uh, the bar. But if th- there's talent on this team. Like Sebastian Mendes, Jackson Mendes, is, yeah. he's very, very good. Um, th- there, there are... There are things that should work. The cupboard's not entirely bare in Orlando, but there is work that. Which is why I disagree, because I would say with Oscar Pereira, with the way he's going to get them to play, if they can make one or two good moves, there's enough talent here to compete for a playoff spot in MLS, because there are going to be five teams who don't handle themselves. Wait, wait, here's well. a question, though. Can you play Nani in. Sort of like I expect Pereja to play a counterattacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I team. expect it to be eight behind. Uh, it's yeah. eight, and then it's three. Yeah, um, it's Nani, it's Pereira, and it's Dom, or can, it's somebody else. Can Nani do that? At you know, it, can he be a counterattacking player over the course of an entire season? Yeah, I think he can. I also think he's lethal in the open field against Major League Soccer, like in MLS. Like you saw him last he year. He disappeared for three months. Agreed. Their biggest games, he did not show up. Agreed. Also, the team didn't show up, and they played yeah, him out wide. Their, they played him in the middle. They moved him here he, and there. He's their he's their biggest player. But I would think his best skill sets are in transition. His ability to break down defenders one v one in MLS, and he can shoot from distance, so he can pull teams out. So yeah, I think he can. Can he do it in the heat for all the year? I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But if you can manage him correctly and get 22 to 25 good games out of him, that's a lot. We'll see. Oscar Breha, big job ahead of him. Uh, Let's talk about some news here. That's one coaching hire. Another coaching hire is Freddy Juarez. He's the head coach of Real Salt Lake. He was the interim. They were, I think, third in the Western Conference. (laughs) Elliot Fall is the GM. He came all the way up from Team Admin under Garth Lagerway, rose all the way up through that front office under uh, Craig Weibel later on as an assistant GM. He now has it full-time. There was some reporting by Sam Stachel and Taylor Twelman about that Jason Christ flirtation, that it was progressing and that it ended, and that maybe the relationship with RSL from the old days with Christ just kind of prevented that one from happening. That was a little bizarre, but in the end, it, it what we expected happened, mm-hmm. Doyle, which was <laughs> they promoted from within, which is what they do, what they did at the USL level and won a championship this year. In doing so with Hamas and Olave, what's it mean? It's just a continuation, it feels like to me, of what the ethos of this club is. It's what it, the ethos of the club has to be. Because when, you know, David Silva or Edinson Cavani or, you know, who, Lionel Messi is talked about playing in MLS... It's not going to be in Utah. I hope that RSL have Lionel Messi's oh, discovery God, right. <laughs> I hope that Elliot Falls just discovery sitting back in the cut. Like, discovery right. Yeah, just sitting back in the cut with it all like, I got him. Um, <laughs> so, like, they have, they have to build from within. They're not going to be able to go out and get a Marcelo Gallardo as a head coach or a Patrick Vieira. Uh, it's just, that's just the way it is in Utah sports. Uh, everything from college basketball and football to the jazz to uh, RSL. And so... Go ahead. I mean, when you have to settle for a Mizzou, former Mizzou. Who are you dunking on here? Quinn Snyder. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that was come on. Yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's for you, Anders. <laughs> wow. That's for you. So, but, but what 
uh, what Freddie Juarez did down the stretch. I mean, they were seven four and two in the regular season once he took over uh, for Mike Pecky. Their defense was nails. He did a good job, I think, of rotating that squad, keeping them fresh for the playoffs. And then they went into the playoffs. I thought at a talent deficit compared to the rest of the Western Conference teams, um, and they had been like one nine and two against Western Conference playoff teams throughout the season. They beat. Portland in that first game, and they didn't just beat them. They were a lot better than them. They didn't have a chance against Seattle, but like that's the gap that they have to figure out how to narrow. And Deloy Hansen talked about it in the, the presser. He said, Freddie's been developing players for 10 years. It's who he is. It's part of who we are as a club. So the goal is to go out and, and you know go to Venezuela and find a player like Jefferson Savarino and turn that $2 million winger into a $10 or $12 million winger. Or you know the next Richie Ledesma who comes through, you hold on to him and you turn that local academy kid into an absolute star. And then Obviously, at some point, RSL have to start selling and moving them on for a profit and reinvesting. But that is like explicitly what this team is doing. It's like Philly. It's like SC Dallas. RSL's all in on it. Uh, Bofo Sazeto, by the way, you might have seen these rumors. Apparently going to League MX, Pumas. That would have been nice to get a fee on, but ultimately it sounds like Bofo Rich, wants to move. Rich is a Pumas guy, right? Huge Pumas. Yeah. Rich Hernandez. <laughs> Just giant oh, Pumas yeah. fan. Oh, yeah. uh, still no head coach Chicago, watch. We said Chicago, Chicago oh, Fire, yeah. NYCFC, no head coach. Giovanni Bron- Broncos seems like he will not be their head coach. I don't know. Inter-Miami still looking as well. And Vieira, apparently, according to Anders, I see in the rundown here, has now been linked to the open Arsenal job. So you know what? Just get linked with an MLS job, (laughs) and you'll get linked with that Arsenal job. You're welcome. Nice just got buried yesterday. I think they lost 4-1. Well, maybe he will get... Canned then. We shall see. Uh, let's talk Miami. Wait, Weeby, who do you want? You want it to be Gallardo still? Come on. Of course I want it to be Gallardo. I tried to speak that thing into reality, and right. it's just not happening for us. Okay. Uh, Luis Robles, he was smart, Susanna. He knew what he was doing. He said, hey, Red Bulls, I know it's going to be Mira. Like, you know, just decline my option. Mm-hmm. Make me a free agent. Let me go do my thing. I've given you a lot of years, and he did it. He's going to Miami. And Miami also got A.J. De La Garza. Yeah. Bringing back the crew from the old galaxy days, huh? <laughs> I yeah, I like David says David David Beckham sh- was like mate, mate. <laughs> locker, locker mates. I've got I've got I've got a situation for you. What did David <laughs> hold on? Beach. What did David Beckham say when he when he saw the new uh, the new stadium, Fort the Lauderdale Stadium, Inter <laughs> Miami Stadium? Tell me tell me what he said when he walked out onto the pitch and he looked around and he saw this stadium going up in eight he months, goes, like a m- goes, quote unquote like a miracle, as he said. He goes, oh my my God, we are we are not. In England anymore, <laughs> mate. <laughs> mate, this is this is next level. I am telling you, this is this is just seriously going to be a, a mecca for soccer here in the United States. And uh, yeah, I'm David Beckham. What? He and took a free kick on the field too. <sighs> and AJ's a part. Sure AJ's yeah. the center. Yeah, of the no, <laughs> like this makes so much sense. Like both, like for both guys. And I, I think it's interesting because they're both. Well, AJ was with the Galaxy for so long. He's obviously like buds. He and mm-hmm. he and David, David are boys. You know, they're gonna have some <laughs> some fun nights out nights. in in Miami. But they were so identifiable with their clubs. Obviously, Luis Robles with the New York Red Bulls, AJ with Galaxy, and then spent the time in Houston. But they're they're veterans. You know, like the, and they've n- neither one has ever been to an expansion club. I think this is a new challenge for them, and I for that reason I like it a lot because I think that when you when you are a veteran in this league, you kind of need that fresh experience, you know, to kind of like reinvigorate yourself and re-energize uh, and just get get more motivated. So they have an opportunity to do something really special in Miami, and they both want to be a, a part of that. You know, they're kind of at the the twilight of their career, if you will, and, and this is a, a huge opportunity to be a part of something that could be really, really special. And so, and for a guy like Luis Robles, I mean, he's good, you know? Like, he's still a really, really good keeper in this league. So it's smart. I think the same way that he was sort of, uh, you know, he was kind of like the face of the Red Bull, sort of the spokesman for that that team. I think that he has the opportunity to do that in Miami uh, with a David Beckham owned squad. I mean, why? It's Miami. Like, why wouldn't you want that opportunity? And for AJ, it's like same kind of thing. Like. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. I can I can be in a, a cool new city. I can be a part of something special. It, it just it makes sense. I also like the fact that they're going to have two veteran MLS guys on an expansion team because I think in expansion teams, that's 
hundred percent necessary. That's why I really like the Dax McCarty move for for Nashville. Yep. Same kind of thing. You need that experience. Luis Robles, uh, yeah, I've I've said this a million times on the show. I fully expect in like ten years he will go from wearing the jersey to wearing the suit yeah. and be basically repping a club in that way as an executive or something else in the public guy. He seems to be training himself for that, but he's still a great goalkeeper, and they have the goalkeeper position pretty much locked down because of the legend. John McCarthy <laughs> was added as a backup goalkeeper. Sounds like an as Open well. Cup Finals appearance to me. Let, oh, Ryan. they're going all the way. They're a quote unquote rival, maybe. We shall see. Atlanta United made some moves. And Julian Gressel, Dave, has to be uh, wondering what's going on right now because he wants a new contract. And then they went out and traded for Brooks Lennon from RSL, who, uh, you know, he plays right back, right wing, right wing back, you know, all the same positions that Julian Gressel plays. He's 22. They paid 300K in allocation for him. One, is that a good move, Brooks Lennon? Two, what might it mean for Julian Gressel? One, it is a good move for Atlanta United. Brooks Lennon is literally Julian Gressel light. He's not as good as Julian Gressel, but he can do all of the same things as you said. He's probably the second best crosser in the league behind Julian Gressel. And if you do bring back Gressel, you've got two guys who can play multiple positions, so they can both be on the field at the same time if you have to. If not, Brooks Lennon is your replacement for Gressel at, I think, his best position at this point is right back because he's not a difference maker enough at right midfield, but he'll still do work for so I think it's a good move for them. For Gressel, what does it mean? It means that it's a little bit of an insurance policy in case he leaves, in case he walks. So it's hard for him to see that. I still think he ends up in Atlanta. I think that they all find a way to understand that he's been a special player for them. He does a lot of things well for them. And I think they both see a number that's possible. It probably comes a little bit later on in the offseason after both have had conversations yeah. with other people. Let to the see negotiations what the reality play out. is. Yeah. Let it the never, market set itself. It never gets done right when you want it to get done, right? Yep. Yeah. Clubs have reason to wait. And it's been a little odd the way they've handled it just because of what he's meant to the club yeah. emotionally to not say we want to make sure that this guy feels taken care of. But I think in the end it'll work out for everyone. If not, if I'm an MLS team, I'll sign Julian Gressel. Yeah, I kind of feel like Julian Gressel is a little bit of an insurance policy for Atlanta, too, in a weird way, where you got Barco, you went on and got PT, but mm, they didn't really hit at times, and you know the chemistry that Julian Gressel's right foot has so with consistent. Joseph Martinez in the 18. Their most consistent guy. He just... It's like, you know, it's like quarterbacking. He's like, hey, Joseph, the make the run. I'll put it on your, on so your I think foot, your head, whatever. Right, I agree with you. I think the problem is when they think of what that player costs... They don't think of that as a TAM player, I think. Mm. I think they say, we got lucky, we got him in the draft, or we did well, whatever you want to say. Yeah. You know, we got this, we don't have to spend big in that spot so we can overspend in other ways to try and build the team, blah, blah, blah. But then in reality is, if you lose him, you're worse off because now you're taking bigger risks on all those other guys who are inconsistent, who aren't going to give it to you every single game, or you're not sure how they're going to fit it. By the way, no Darlington Nagby, too. I, I mm. have to remind myself yeah. of that with Atlanta. they got to find a way to replace that. Who could be a landing spot for Julian Gressel? Let's just play the fantasy game. Julian Gressel wants Tam. Who would potentially give him Tam? Where might he fit? Mm, Sounders are down to one winger. Uh, I, like Jill I like Julian Gressel better as a wing back than a, a pure winger. But I think if you put him as that right-sided guy and you had Ladero, Morris, and then Rui Diaz up front, Gressel would figure out how to be pretty good in that situation. <laughs> you want to throw Nashville out there, too? I was going to say, yeah. if you want MLS veterans yeah. on teams and he's been a part of expansion, and once again, he's flexible. Mm -hmm. So as a, you're building an expansion team, if you find a good deal yeah. on someone else, okay, you can move him to right mid. It might not be his best spot. You can have him play at center mid at times if you need to. So, yeah, he has flexibility there. Um, I would say Minnesota, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, that would probably be more as a winger, but if Angelo Rodriguez is on the team, you need someone to play crosses in because he doesn't really do much else. Um, and he doesn't really finish off crosses either. And I brought up the Galaxy <laughs> before we started just because he's a pure uh, talent upgrade. Like He's just better than all the guys on the Galaxy. Is he what the LA Galaxy are going to spend TAM money on in 2019 or 2020? No, maybe not, but he would be good. Well, that's the... Question that Julian Gressel's asking, who will pay me 10 money? Will it be Atlanta or somebody else, or will he have to leave? He's got one year left on his deal. Uh, some other news here, Columbus Crew, Axel Schuberg got him off waivers, so that center back position starting to get pretty packed. They're also linked with the Dutch defender, Vito Wormgoer. <laughs> 
which I love that wow. name. Wormgur. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but uh, well, as a natural firm, Dutchman, right? Firmgur. You're very calm. Firmgur. Yeah. yeah, I think I might be Dutch. I find that out. <laughs> Sporting KC got a center back. Brought him over from uh, um, the same club that produced a bear, or didn't produce, but sent a bear as well as Dario Zuparak, who just signed with the Timbers on a TAM deal to Major League Soccer. They're the new Malmo. Our Rijeka. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, a lot of players coming over from there. Roberto Punchitz. That's is the uh, pronunciation, as I'm yeah, told. Okay. He's got 100 plus games in two Bundesliga, excuse me, with Union Berlin. This is a Czech club? Uh, no, it is a uh, Croatian, Croatian, club. Croatian club. Correct. So now they have Beisler, Brath, Fontas, and Graham Smith, and Punchets. So uh, we have an email from Adam and KC who says Peter Vermees said in the press conference that we're definitely getting a player on each of the lines. He wants to know is this the year that KC finally spent big or smaller transfers like in years past? This is a smaller transfer, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. No fee, got him for free. That's pretty small. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a flyer. Raise your hand, or I guess it's a podcast, so uh, say yay or nay. Yay if you think Sporting KC are going to sign that big number nine and, like, go big. Maybe Liga MX, maybe elsewhere, like transfer fee, all the... Yay. 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 I'm raising my um, hand and saying yay. I'm so less confident than nay. that. Yeah, I'm like right in the middle of yay and nay. Where you guys I, think they'll stay in MLS and <laughs> try to go for like a Bradley Wright Phillips or maybe get Dom at like I don't know get mm. get Orlando. I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be something. dumb. I don't think it'll be dumb. But I just I, there's this scenario where it just keeps ticking on and the questions keep piling up and the deal hasn't gotten done and then all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on Hurtado Island. <laughs> oh. you know, yeah, that's actually, I think that's the most likely scenario, which is they end up getting no one. Oh, and it God. ends up being like, I, they, ha- they have to. Re- I, they they do, have I know, to. I know, they have to. We shall see. Uh, yeah. They're going to get Angela Rodriguez from Minnesota. Mm. <laughs> Nashville with a signing, Honduran International, Brian Beckless. I like this one more than a lot of other people. He's Are we calling him a current hunter in international? Uh, we, well, you know, we don't, that, those Cup rules veteran. never apply. Those yeah. rules never apply, That's and fair. you know that. He's 34, but hey, Minor Figueroa started like 25 games last year at 36. So. Uh, that team Minor do. Figueroa is also That's the true. captain of the national team. Beckless isn't even on the national Beckless team. just left Nicaxa. He had been a starter until the Clausura this okay. year. So just, uh, you know, it could work out. Kellen Rowe is back with the Revs. What? I thought huh? it was supposed to be Seattle, Susanna. Huh? Huh? The, yeah, this one. This one. I was so, I had to like. No, you saw this coming. I did not, Obviously, I did the Rams were going to trade Kellen Rowe to have him go to three teams. Where he like? I, yeah. I thought I was checking the MLS app, and yeah. I saw this, and I was like, "Wait, uh, uh, what? This isn't uh, 2015. This yeah, is 2019. No. Very, like, it was very, very confusing to me. Great yeah. Plug for the MLS app, though. What's that? Great uh, plug for the MLS app. Yeah, Kalen never does it's that. Very, <laughs> it's very handy. Um, yeah, no, the, I, this one was very bizarre to me. Um, I was super surprised because, well, Kellen Rowe is from Seattle, and so I know Doyle was a big proponent of him going to Seattle. He would have been an outstanding it would have fit made there. so much sense. Depth, depth, depth for days. Um, and then there was some talk about Vancouver, Pacific Northwest. So for him to be going back to New England, I mean, like – I understand that he, you know, he's got his um, his foundation mm-hmm. that he and he was very, very much entrenched into the the culture in in New England and was very active in the community. So he has those connections. So in that sense, I can see it. Um, I mean, I'm I, clearly Bruce Arena likes him, but then as Doyle pointed out to me, he's the one that Bruce sent him home him. early <laughs> in the Gold Cup two summers ago when Kellen Rowe was actually playing very well. So I'm. I, Okay, like I'm just I this one just kind of was a head scratcher for me because I just it caught me off guard I was I, not anticipating I, I'm, it. I am really surprised that Seattle or, or Vancouver didn't make it worth Because if you look at Seattle in particular first of all, it looks like Victor Rodriguez is not coming back, which is big um, and then You know, they don't have a ton of high-level players elsewhere on that three band in terms of, of depth in that four two three mm-hmm. one and he could play all three of those spots and they're gonna need someone who could do that, especially in the middle of the season when Ladero's at Copa America and when maybe Svensson is is in you know at the Euros and then so you know uh Roldan will have to move back and play the six and then only need somebody to play like Ro can do that. Ro can play the eight, he can play the ten, he can play either wing. Um which I, I guess why Bruce said Come back to New England. I do wonder if there was a talk about, like, okay, do I have a chance in this scheme, in this team, to actually win a starting job, to play 
you know, full time as a central midfielder or maybe as a left winger, which is where Bruce used him in 2017. Um, and, and I got to assume that the, the answer was yes, because Kellen Rowe has had a rough two years. But he's still really freaking good. He's still really, he's really He's also, what, talented. like 26 years old? 28 now. Oh, he's 28? He did just turn 28, so this is it. He's got a baby it. face. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he did get a lot of time in came Kansas quick. City, and it wasn't good this year. No. But, but, he went but to nobody our, was good in Kansas City. Well, yeah, that's fair, right? When he got there, that, or can when I, he got in the Can I ask you one thing? Do you want to use your juice right now? Because we're... I got a, somebody in my ear saying there's a time issue for us yeah. on Kellen Rowe or Juan well, Agudelo to well, Toronto. that's why Kellen Rowe goes to New England <laughs> because the best center midfielder in Major oh League boy. Soccer has left New England in Juan Agudelo to go to Toronto. This is a great move. This is probably the best move of the offseason. You are so excited. This, this, is, is, this. Center midfielder this, is, what, this is what reentry stage two <laughs> was created for. You know they don't see him as a central midfielder. They see him as Josie's backup. Everyone sees him as central midfielder. They will change that once oh they boy. see him in person, in one one rondo, one game of five v five. He's right into central midfield. Uh, yeah. Oh my lord. Immediately. Yeah. Please, Immediately. Please, How Greg. many goals? How many Please, goals? Greg. Well, that's not the point. Oh yeah, it's never He's the a point, right? Uh, is, this, is this a bit? No. <laughs> Watching him play that position for New England was legit. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. He was <laughs> completely lost. No. No. He no. had no idea where the game was happening. For sure. Because it's the first time he's ever played it, but he's legitimate in possession. He actually moves the game pr- fairly well, and he's more connected when he plays there. Because when he plays as a forward, he disappears for 84 minutes of the game. Oh. If he scores in the six, it's good. Well, you, your heart's going to be broken six. because he's Josie's backup. Uh, this is a chatty <laughs> crew. So let's, oh, I got to skip some. Don't, ter- don't I Terrence Boyd me right now. Let's talk 22 under 22, and I'm, I might stretch this show. It's going to be a host's decision very soon. Uh, alert, alert, alert. Tyler Adams is back in training. So that's awesome. And also, uh, we're working on getting Alfonso Davies for a quick chat sometime in January. So look forward to that. The <laughs> he top, had a rough week last week. Yeah, well, the top five here Reggie Cannon in 2222 this year. Brian Rodriguez, four. Paxton Pomichol, three. Ezekiel Barco, two. Diego Rossi, one. The full list is MLSsoccer.com or the MLS app. Pick a player to shout out for props. Who's it going to be? Can be any of the 22. Who wants to start? I'll start. Go. I'm going to go with number 17, Luis Diaz of yes, the Columbus I love Crew it. SC. Thank you. Thank you very he's much. He's an under. He's like people. He's not one I would think you would no, say, but exactly. I'm glad that you did. Exactly. So I actually got to see him play. I was in Cincinnati for uh, Heineken Rivalry Week. So Cincinnati was hosting the Columbus Crew, and I was sitting with um, some of the front office from Columbus, and they were so stoked about this kid. And he came on as a sub in the second half of that game. I, his speed was unbelievable. He changed the, com- the complexion of that game for for Columbus, and they were so they're just so excited about him and watching him. He was just so dynamic. He was so good on the ball, and um, yeah, just one that I was like, oh, he's a he's a player that I hadn't really because he, he came over in July, and so yeah. he was still relatively new to the league. And unless you were watching a ton of yeah, Rodrigo so he had not really Diano, you you might not know had not registered on my radar yet, but that game put him on my radar, and I loved what I saw, and I just know that. Columbus is really, really excited about him. Two so. goals, four assists, yep. off the jump. Good production. Looking forward in the final third. If you're Columbus, that's good. Milton Valzuela didn't make the list here, but he'll be back. We expect at left back as well. Dave, who's your player? Uh, I gave you one before the show. Can I just change, yeah, it? change it? Do, do whatever it. I want. Do I'm going to say want. Christian Paredes at the bottom of the list. I think he has the potential to be um, a high-level controlling central midfielder in this league. Uh, I was surprised that he didn't get more time this year because I think he's a great partner for Chara in that, you know, he's quick passing. He covers a ton of ground. He can fill in when Chara leaves spaces, but he can also help you knock it around the final third and control that ball uh, and control play there. Um, But I think over the next year, you're going to see him grow and grow and grow. And I think he's going to be one of the best young midfielders in this league. Portland. Not necessarily in this league, though. Portland still don't own his rights. He's still. I thought they bought the loan. I think so. From Club America. Still an Americanista? I believe so. Oh, the arch rival of uh, Rich Hernandez. <laughs> so. What about you, Doyle? Who's your player? Uh, Mason Toy. I, I think if you're going to look for for someone who, who jumps from the you know teens or even off the list um, to top five or even number one next year, Toy's got a really good shot uh, because it looks like he's probably going to be the starting center forward for Minnesota United next season. And he had, I think, eight or nine goals in all competitions this year in very limited minutes. If he wins that center forward job uh, and he scores 14, 15 goals, which if you look at his production per minute, it's totally reasonable. Uh, this kid is going to blow up 
in terms of what we expect from him uh, in the league, in terms of what we expect from him on a national team level, and in terms of maybe uh, being a guy who gets sold for big money because he, he checks so many boxes physically and he has really good instincts around uh, the 18, just needs to work on uh, his hold-up play and his recognition of the game's geometry, so to speak, uh, as a center forward. But more consistency. We've, we've already seen him improve, right? So, like, yeah, the pathway yeah. to this is how it works isn't, like, pure potential, but it has to come. Right. He's already shown he understands how to get himself better, which a lot of young players have never And, and it needs to be said, it, he, from all accounts, including his own, he improved mentally a ton from yeah. 2018 to 2019, said... I, 2018 didn't work for me, and it was all my fault. I it yeah. was I did not have the right attitude, and to hear a young player say that I think was huge, and his teammates recognized it as well. And the other thing is like Adrian Heath has you know Dom Dwyer, Kyle Laren, he has guys in that mold under his belt. He has helped push to the next level in MLS. I'm gonna go my guy Jesus Ferreira. No, I'm just kidding, but I love Jesus Ferreira. <laughs> it's Lassie Lapalainen. <laughs> Because every picture of this guy, he looks like he's completely surprised about something. Like somebody jumped out and scared him. Like, Lassie! Every single one. Maybe it's when like, your name is Lassie, that's the only way people yeah, can say yeah, it. So he like, is constantly. Lassie. I don't know. He just looks like something scared him at all times. Uh, but he's legit. <laughs> like, he runs past people. He's calm. He's collected in the box. He scored goals in his little cup of coffee in MLS. Looks like he'll be here for another year on loan. And he's playing in the Euros. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's from too. the best soccer country in Scandinavia. Mm. Finland. The Finns are the dominant force. You know, for right years. Now. Technically, technically not Scandinavia. For years. Really? What? what? No. Mm. Yeah. How's that true? We're trying to just, just I think, I think it's, poke I think it's like we a, missed. In, in, in ethnic. <laughs> I'm saying that we missed it. Anders says it's false. No, Anders doesn't is a, know. Anders is a Swede about. and he would know. I will tell you this in Finland, the official languages of Finland are Finnish and Swedish. Both okay, of them are so official. there's been some crossover. Well, they were like owned by the Swedes. Where are we going with this? I don't know. <laughs> Scandinavia. <laughs> Keep up, Suze. Lassie Lapalainen with Thierry Henry. He's the Finnish Henry. Henri the Finn. Cherry the Finn. <laughs> Does that mean he becomes a center forward? Uh, no, maybe later. Maybe. Let me ask you this. How do you fit uh, Lapalainen and Ignacio Piatti onto you the field? You play two inverted left wingers at the same time. Or a 4 a four three it's two like, one. It's the they ultimate play. It's the ultimate the overload. Okay. It's <laughs> overload <laughs> squared. All right. Doyle, you thought a conversation that started with he always looks surprised in pictures was going to end with an actual <laughs> I, soccer I actually hands. do. I actually do really <laughs> love Lossie Lapalainen as a player. We'll see if he's he awesome. takes a big step forward. I think he's great. Amazing. Um, probably, eh, let's just do this one. Who is the Alfonso Davies, Tyler Adams, or Young Hell Herrera in this group this year? Is there one? Who would it be? The guy who like goes on to and just immediately makes a splash when they leave MLS. Is, uh, it, is it Rossi? He's number one. Rossi will, but he's not at that level of player. I don't think he's as good as as Davies or Adams. He or is. The, he is. I him. sorted these though. He's the only one I put in bona fide star. But there was one guy who I said so. I don't think will be a bona fide star yeah. as soon as basically the season begins. Brian Rodriguez. That's him. Yeah. But, uh, Brian Rodriguez. I think if you were to pull um, international scouts about this list, like who's the best player, who has the highest upside on this list. It would be Brian Rodriguez, and you can see it when he, he plays. He's spectacular, and he's already spectacular for Uruguay. <laughs> he showed against the U.S. a couple of months ago. Um, I, I, still had, like, I still have so much Pax and Pomical stock because he's a game changer on both sides of the ball. If you look at his ability to turn defense into offense – Dallas fans saw it against L uh, against the Galaxy early in the season. They saw it against NYCFC late in the season. And U.S. fans saw it against France in the round of 16 in the U-20 World Cup. It was Paxton Pomacall who created that match-winning goal in a huge moment with his defensive instincts and his ability to cover ground. I honestly think he's going to end up being like a Tyler Adams-level player. I just want to throw this out there. Paxton Pomacall did not make this list in 2018, seven of the top 10 in 2019 on 2222 did not make the 2018 list. So, yeah, we're looking at number ones for next year. Brian Rodriguez, Paxton Pomical, maybe Barco, maybe somebody else. Probably there will be a lot of new faces to pick from at that time. Maybe Mateus Pellegrini mm. with Inter Miami. Possibly. We shall see. I got to get you to the mailbag unless you got something. I was uh, going to throw two names. One would be. I don't know who the coach will be. I don't know what they'll play, but if healthy James Sands would have started 27, 28 mm. games this year at center back, if he's a legitimate starter at center back as a teenager, that puts you on a different level. 
And then the other one that you just have to throw out there because you have to is Efra Alvarez just because of what he can do. I don't know what position it'll be at. I don't know what league it'll be at. I don't know how often it'll happen. But wherever he goes, he'll score some insane goal and he'll light things up for at least a week or two. Um, so he's going to be a name that I think people are going to be excited about yeah. wherever he, he goes. The trickle effect was on this year. GBS like, gave him some minutes and he wowed. I hope next year they just crank that just a little bit more. Just keep up in the ante with him. It's time for the mailbag, 401 mls You can thank Andrew and Brooklyn for this longer than normal episode of Extra Time. You can also thank Andrew and Brooklyn for this email. CCL at Coney Island. Let's go. D-Train, field trip time. We're going if this happens. If NYCFC play games at MCU Park, we are going. We're getting on the train. You We're getting a crew. We're getting a squad. It's at gonna- that stadium... With, the, with, with just a beautiful breeze just night. blowing in off, breeze. off, you know, the Atlantic. Yeah. 70 mi- it's like Not it's cold colder than the North freaking Pole, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're going? Doyle. You're We're going. That's what the brown, go. that's what the brown going. liquor going. is for. You are oh, coming. Flasks. Right. Yes. All right, Suze. All right. See, this is Chicago sports fan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got, oh, you guys, you have not breeze. frozen and still right. you sat at Soldier Field with that lakefront wind just blowing right in your face. I mean, yeah, your butt's numb. Suze will lead the way. She'll put out a one-sheeter with best practices, <laughs> well hand warmers, brands of gloves, things Y'all of that nature. Y'all don't even know. Go Cyclones. Jorge <laughs> Chavez of the Austin Anthem. He'd love to hear our thoughts on Claudio Reyna and Josh Wolf at the helm of Austin FC. Tactics, formation, quality of players they may be able to attract or wait until 2021 on this. By the way, there is some rumors hitting Twitter right now that perhaps a team that could also be joining around that time or later or whenever is Charlotte. Board of Governors is going down in New York City right now. In Brooklyn with Andrew. Oh, I'm not in Brooklyn right now. Oh, well, they are. This other Andrew. Yeah. Sa- I think Sam might be in Brooklyn. He's tweeting that he saw some handshakes going down. And I'm Uh-oh. like, what's he doing? Is he on a rooftop somewhere with like a... You know, with like a, what is it? Benjamin. It's not a telescope, yeah. but yeah, like the telescopic, I don't know what it's called. It's a telescope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, monocular. <laughs> Mono- yeah, whatever it, it, it is. Like the pirate thing? I'm thinking more he has the, you know, you see it at oh. the old days at the opera where you had like the, the old Coppola movie. Monocle. Yeah. Monocle. Mon- no, that's not a monocle. No, that's not a monocle. No, it's not a monocle. Single. All right. Yeah. Guys. This is going off what? the rails. Claudio Reyna and Josh Wolf. So with Austin. With Josh Wolf, if you want to know what his teams will look like, watch Greg Berhalter's Columbus Cruise teams. Anyone who's worked for him, anyone who's played in Columbus says it's like hearing Greg speak with a different voice. He says the exact same things about the game. He speaks in the same way. It's the same buzzwords. It's the same concepts. So that is what Austin is going to look like on the field. On Claudio Reyna's side, it's a little murky. We know how successful NYCFC has been, but we know how big the city football group is and how that changes the way your job is. We also don't specifically know how much Claudio did of building that roster. How much was it Patrick Vieira at times and Jason Christ and Dome and how much was it David Lee? David Lee, yeah, Sam Lee. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Sam Lee. (laughs) How much of it was – I went to Vietnam, dude. I don't know what's going on. How much of it was David Lee? And then the other thing that I think with Austin in terms of player profile is – I think they're going to try and tap into how close they are to Mexico. I think they're going to try and tap into what Texas is and how it's, as Oscar Perea has said, how it's a, an area of immigrants and a lot of Latin Americans. So I think that's the direction they're going to look in for players. And Claudio, of course, is from a Uruguayan family and has brought Jesus Medina to Major League Soccer and Maxi Morales. So I think that's the profile of player on the high end that you're looking at. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. It's going to be interesting, though, because Josh Wolf has never managed a team. And as Dave said, there's uh, some questions as to how how strong a hand Claudio Reyna had in building that roster. So it does feel um, high variance mm. here for, for Austin. But they got plenty of runway, at least. They have a beautiful plan for a training center. I can mm-hmm. at least say that. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Nutty. Uh, this is our email of the day. We'll do this and get out of here. Tom Douthat, you got the honors from Louisiana. Uh, yeah, he says the Supporters' Shield is dead as a regular season trophy with the uh, change in schedule. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree, Tom, but you had some interesting ideas after this. From its ashes, we should make a bigger deal about Western and Eastern Conference regular season champions, says Tom, and MLS should commit to balanced conference schedules Dot, 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 forever. These will now be robust, uh, robust, robust 14 to 16 team competitions. The new Supporters Shield should be a preseason cup for the winner of a home and away between the East and the Western Conference champions, like pennant winners, not like the teams that go to MLS Cup. Uh, that can emphasize the value the of this competition. Used to play in the World Series, that is yeah. MLS yeah, Cup. Right, but MLS Cup would still have the playoffs in Tom's world. So here's what we have in oh, Tom's. Tom. 
MLS World. Oh, so he's not talking about like a Campione to Campione. Yeah, basically. It's a yeah, cup. correct. It's the Campione de Campione to go to Campione's mm. Cup. Uh, I don't think it even is connected to Campione's Cup in this case, but he says there's a trophy for Eastern Western and Conference not, champion. And I don't care. He says there's a trophy for the preseason. That's the Supporter Shield. I think we're devaluing the Supporter Shield a little bit doing that. He says there's interleague play. So you can get in the Nashville, Atlanta, or Chicago, St. Louis, which now is crazy because he says those count for the playoffs. So there's two tables, one for the conference to win East and West and one to go to the playoffs. It's an awful lot why, to keep track why of. Why are you giving this email that much yeah. air time? What's happening? You we already have here? three hours for right, this episode. Well, that's it. I'm sorry, Tom. I enjoyed your... You're thinking I'm gonna have to really like hone in on my Liga MX t- MLS yeah, I combo. Yeah, I out like two minutes. I will ago. say because my my delivery on that was Monday's coming soon, so I really <laughs> better get my ideas down. This is a tough crowd. I will say this: um, Do you, you like the concept of East and West completely balanced, and then they come together for the playoffs? Or is no, that I'm gonna out ignore of the, that and say my thing, which is okay. we do give a CCL <laughs> spot to the conference champions. I think that is valuing conference championships yep. because we push that. And if you want to say the loser of MLS Cup wouldn't get one in the conference champion, like to try and make the conference standing stronger, you could try and do that. Otherwise, I'm not going to lie. I don't care what you're about to ask. (laughs) Okay. All right. Welcome back from Vietnam. You complete me, Dave. I'm so happy that you're here next to me. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And I certainly am not going to consider ways to take you off the schedule for the rest of the year. No, I'm just kidding. It's great to have you back. Oh, I'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Cut me off that schedule. All right. That means I got more. We already vacation. went over oh, time. God. Thank you to Oscar Pereira for joining us. You three for being here as well. And to Anders for, you know, being the great Swedish person that he is. We're out of here. We'll see you on Monday, everybody.